The following program is sponsored by friends and partners of Oasis Ministries. Sometimes life is like a burning desert. If the days were miles, it'd be a million wide. And one can get so thirsty for just one drop of mercy to only find the bones for someone else. God is your oasis, and in dry places he makes flowers grow. Oh, God is your oasis. your He was bruised for our iniquity. Ah, and surely he bore all our sorrow. was wounded for our transgression. stand and shake hands with two people and tell them Jesus was wounded for our transgressions whatever your problem Jesus was bruised for our iniquities whatever your hurt you wounds whatever your sickness and surely he bore all our sorrows, and by his stripes we are healed. Oh, he was wounded for our transgressions. 
Jesus was bruised for I love you, Lord. Iniquity and surely Jesus bore all our sorrows and by his stripes we are healed. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Talk to us tonight, Lord. They saw no man save Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, don't let them hear me tonight. Talk to us. Lord, I'm going to try so hard to stay in the Bible tonight. Talk to us. Speak to us. Let's try to walk in your word tonight. Speak to us, Lord. Talk to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Talk to us, oh God. Talk to us, oh God. Talk to us. Us, Lord, speak to us out of thy holy word. Speak to us, Lord. Speak to us, oh God. Talk to us, Lord. Appreciate you being here. Monday morning, Sheila and I headed out to the meeting up in Murfreesboro Trion right under Nashville. We got to Chattanooga and wanted to go need to go to a place and it wasn't open yet. And I've, I've been working on this thing. I want to hear the voice of the Lord, but I want to learn to be led. And uh, Sheila just wanted to go to this place. We went over there, and Sheila's checking on something. I'm walking around this lady, probably around 40 years old. She's following me. She says, can I ask you something? I said, yes. She said, you're the preacher on TV. I said, yes, ma'am. She starts crying. She said, I watch you every day. I've been away from God for a long time. Long time. So we talked a few moments now. I said, you're so precious. Could I introduce you to my wife? And she said, yeah. By the time I got to Sheila, the Spirit of the Lord had done fail. And we didn't look for a corner or a side aisle. We wouldn't make no scene, but he was just too close to miss. And I said, can we pray now? And I, we began to pray. And I remember I started off saying, Lord, you don't need a microphone for this type of anointing nor pulpit. You've already showed up. And she just, the little girl, and she, she, the enemy had tried to convince her that the Lord had just forgot her. She had went too far. And uh, the Lord just fell on her right there in, in, in the little store in, in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And she began to weep and repent and give her heart back to the Lord. And she turned to Sheila, and I don't remember how she said it, but she said, I didn't want to work. I didn't want to do anything. She said, I'm going about my life now. I've got the Lord back. Everything will be okay. God is good. The Lord is so good. He's so good. He's so good. He's so good. Bless him. Jeremiah 17 and 14, heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Friend, if the Lord heal you, you shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. It's, ama it's amazing how many times salvation runs hand in hand with healing. Hallelujah. We, we look, I have looked into the eyes of murderers and say, his, his grace is big enough to save you. I have looked in the eyes of rapists. Brother Andy, you don't know where I've done and where I've been. I'm not sure the grace of God. I have looked in the eyes of hideous people that's done horrible things and I have watched them repent and plead and beg and I've watched their sins be covered and could I have a witness somewhere hallelujah we'll preach real hard on there's no limit to the grace of God if somebody don't cross that road of no return but when it comes to healing hallelujah hallelujah and I believe I feel a release somewhere somewhere I'm not looking for if God wants to to give somebody an instant miracle, it's okay. How do some miracles by the same Spirit, some faith, 
Hallelujah, if you got the gift of miracles and we'll let you preach another night. Hallelujah, I'm not, if God wants to do something instantly, we'll deal with that and we'll praise God, we'll shout for that. But I feel a deep assurance in here, just a little and 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 a little. We can pray this through. We can fight this thing through. We can get your health back. We can get your strength back. If God wants to do it in a second of time, he's God. But I feel assurance in here. Hallelujah. You don't eat one bite and get all your strength back. You don't go from being real weak to getting your strength. But you eat another bite. You eat another bite. Turn off your soap operas. Turn off your Facebook. Start eating this word. Start telling yourself, by his stripes I'm healed. Quit feeding yourself discouragement. Quit feeding yourself doubt. Quit feeding yourself fear. Stay away from people that tell you it's never going to turn around. Hallelujah. Stay away from people that tell you God's never going to move. Get in the mirror and preach to yourself. He died for me and he bled for me and he is wounded for me and he's going to move for me and he's going to make a way for me. Start eating the Word of God. Start eating the Word of God. If anybody wants these scriptures, we'll make you a copy tonight. Hallelujah. Hang them on your refrigerator. Put them on your sun visor. Every time fear comes out, get out of the room. But the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not walk. Every time doubt comes, every time that pain shoots through your body, don't fight it with doubt or fear, discouragement. Start feeding yourself the Word of God. For I, I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds. Jeremiah 30 and 17. Hosea 6 and 1. Come and let us return on the Lord. He hath torn us, and he will heal us. Matthew 10 and 1. When he called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. Friend, we've got the same Holy Ghost. In fact, in fact, this is pre this is pre day of Pentecost. This is pre outpouring of the Holy Ghost. In fact, in this scripture right here, the Holy Ghost wasn't living in man. It was moving upon man. And the Holy Ghost was only moving upon them. And when the Holy Ghost had moved upon them, he gave them power to heal all manner of diseases. The Holy Ghost just don't move upon us. It lives inside of us. Hallelujah. I believe we have power. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, Isaiah, or Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, recovery of sight to the blind, and liberty to them that are bruised. Luke 5, 17. And it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every ta town of Galilee and Judah and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Little Sue Womack. Sue, you're still blessing to so many people. I don't know. Five, I can't keep up with time. Five, six years ago, her little mama, and I think of Gladys. Gladys, what a, what, what a soldier. Sue had brought Gladys into her home. Gladys had got sick. She'd become bedridden, couldn't get out of the bed. And, and, and called me. Call me. I don't even know if I've talked to you about this, Sue. Call me and say, Brother Anthony, I need you to come. When nobody's here, I want to talk to you about my funeral. Uh, this is the words I said. I said, Gladys, I will come. I will talk to you. But not now about your funeral. We'll talk about that later. But, Brother Anthony, doctors have said my body's doing certain things. Remember this, Sue? Hallelujah. And she said, I don't have long to live. And she basically was given up. 
She felt she had weeks to live, and you could see things working. Sue, Sue Collins said, Brother Anthony, come and pray it. And, and, and we talked a time or two. I said, Sue, give me one day to prepare. I went through and I got scriptures. Betty and Re Remember Richard? Betty and Richard went with us. We went down there. We got down there. We sung a song or two, and I had scriptures that I'm reading some of them tonight. I had scriptures marked in my little Thompson chain Bible, and I passed it to one, to another, and another would get it, and we'd read about healing, and another would get it, and, and he sent his word, and he healed them, and another would get it, and they'd read about healing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I, I, rem I remember this. I remember her little feet start moving. And Gladys got so excited. Hallelujah. You know what got her excited? She started tasting of the Word of God. She started just, just chew. Hallelujah. Don't let this service end right here. If you want a copy of my scriptures, we'll go back here and make you a little copy of them or go home and dig out your own. But every day, if there's something going on in your body, don't, don't go down and make a funeral arrangements right now. We don't mind burying you, but you don't have we don't have to bury you because you're sick. You can just pull your feet up in bed and you can go home. If it's my time to go, who says cancer or heart attack has to take me out? All God has to do is open his hand and let my breath go and my little body will shut down. I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. We're children of God. We're children of God, and like it or not, we're living below our benefits. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we was working on a secular job, and they, they were taking away the benefits that we've let the enemy take away from us, we'd be rioting, we'd be picketing, we'd be living out the gates night and day. We need to go and stand at the gates of heaven and say, Listen here, Jesus. There's a lot more benefits in here than what I am receiving. I am willing to give my life to you and walk upright before you. But I want you to honor your part of the contract. I want you to honor this part of the covenant. Jesus, if you and I took a salt covenant, hallelujah, you said if I'd be faithful to you, you'd be faithful to me. Lord, I'm not trying to live a double life. I'm not trying to be part of this world. I need my benefits. I need my benefits. I need my benefits. Luke 5, 17, and it came to pass on a certain day that he was teaching that there was Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by which were come out of every town of Galilee. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them, Luke 9 and 2. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Hallelujah. God's not only sent us to preach, he sent us to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Way back under the old covenant, way back Genesis 20, 17. And Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Amalek and his wife and his maid servants, and they bear children under the old covenant. Under the old covenant, how much more will he do it under the new covenant? Psalms 32, O oh Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. Psalms 107 and 20, he sent his word and healed them and sheltered them from their destruction. Isaiah 53 and 5, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. Somebody chew on this a little bit. He was bruised for our iniquity. He was bruised. For, somebody chew on it a little bit. And by his stripes we're healed. And by his stripes we're healed. It's not really biblical, but but they say that he was probably beat with a cat with a with a whip of thirty a cat of nine tails. They said that. It's probably what they beat him 39 times with the cat of nine tails. And they say they have broke diseases down into 39 categories. If that's true, hallelujah. As he went there and them old soldiers says, we're going to break you. We're going to make you admit that you're not Emmanuel, that you're not God, that you're just a prophet or a teacher. We're, we're going to make
make you admit that you're not you're not the lived way. You're not the truth. You're not the shepherd. We're going to break you. But each time that whip was coming down, he didn't deny, he didn't deny who he was. He didn't walk away. Dally, I give up. I surrender. He was wounded for your transgression. He was bruised for your iniquity. He paid the full price. And by his stripes ye are healed. You can have your healing. To every man is given a measure of faith. So don't, don't, don't let me preach. My, well, I ain't got no faith. You have a measure of faith. Matthew 4, 24. And his fame went out throughout all Syria. And they brought on him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases, and torments, and that which were possessed with devils, and them which were lunatics, and them that had palsy, and he healed them. Matthew 8, 13. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way as thou hast believed. That's what I need to preach tonight. Go thy way. But Brother Anthony, the lump's still there. Go thy way. But Brother Anthony, my heart's still hurting. Chew on the Word of God and go thy way. But Brother Anthony, I, I, don't, I don't feel no better. Just, just chew on the Word of God and go thy way. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Can, can I be mean tonight? Friend, you'll go, you'll go and let a doctor treat you you don't know nothing about. You'll go let a doctor examine you and poke that you don't know nothing about. He'll give you pills that you don't know nothing about. And if it don't work the first day, you don't throw the pill bottle away. If it don't work the third day or the fourth day, you don't. You just keep on trying, hoping that that man's got something can help you. Some of them do, some of them don't. Hallelujah! They had they had some doctors on the news this week. They they the more of a certain types of medicine, really popular medicines, the more of these medicines they get people on. They get promotion. They get trips to the Super Bowl. They get vacations in Hawaii. They're putting people on medicine that they don't need to fatten their pockets. Books, hallelujah. But this little preacher's asking nothing from you. I'm just preaching to you. I'm preaching to you something that's infallible. Hallelujah. Some of the medications may have failed, but I don't know if it's ever trusted in the Word of God that the Word of God's failed them. Because David said, I was young, but now I'm old. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Start chewing on this Word of God. Hallelujah. Get you down some healing scriptures and start telling yourself God's going to move for me. I'm going to walk I'm going to walk out of this disease. I'm going to walk out of this sickness. Hallelujah. 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 God's been really, really kind to me. I mean, really kind. I'm preach just gentle. With how we treat others, we're judging ourselves. So I'm preach just gentle. God's been really kind to me. Not one time I got a rash and had to check it out. So that I've not, I've not really been to a doctor since. April 29th, 1960, when they left, dismissed me when I was born. To get two jobs, I had to have health examinations. All they did was just write stuff down, examine you a little bit, and say, well, you're okay, go on to work. So outside that, God's been good to me. But, but about, and I ain't, Sheila knows about it, one or two. About two years ago, I got, was moving some stuff, and I got hurt. And I'd had a pain. It would shoot from my side right here down to my ankle bad enough to make a grown man cry. I'd get in the car, and I'd take and pick up my foot and put it in the car. And, and I was Walmart or Summers, and I went over to the 
pharmacist, and I said, you about like a doctor, and I described what's going on. I said, what do you think this is? And he told me the nerve it was. And he said, you've hurt your lower, lower vertebrae. And he said, he said, only thing will help you is a, a surgery. He said, the pain will never go away. It'll never get better. And he said, he said, if you don't let them operate before it gets worse and worse, he said, it's just going to be more damage. And, I, and I, don't, I don't know if his diagnosis was totally right or not, but that's what he told me. And everything he said matched up with my pain. Now, he described, and he said he had studied in this, and he had dealt with this often. He described the nerve down through my leg and all, my hip and all. And, and, and so it didn't get any, any better. During these, some of these mornings up here, I'd, I'd get down and pray. And I don't know, too, if you go back and look at some of the old DVDs two or three years ago where I was preaching, you'd watch me just stand in here. I could wear, I could, I remember for a while I had to wear suspenders. I couldn't wear nothing tight. It hurt so bad. And the boys knew and Sheila knew. And I'd tell one to, I'd just, I'd just say, and I'd tell folk, I'd say, if God brings you before me, I need prayer. But, but about eight months ago, I was up here one morning and I thought, Lord, we're helping others and you're moving for others. And I don't think you're mad at me. And I'd sure like to feel better. Hallelujah, it didn't go away, but it felt a little better, and it didn't go away, and the next day it felt a little better. And I want to tell you, friend, I am not all the way out of the woods yet, but I don't have to pick up my foot and put it in the car anymore. I could, there was about a year I had to lay on one side to sleep. I could, most of the time I sleep about any way I want to. And why are you telling this? I'm telling you, I'm taking it by faith. I am trying to live what I'm preaching. Ta -ta -la -ba -da -ya. I'm, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And I believe one of these nights I'm going to walk out of this building and it might be a three-year-old, it might be a 30-year-old, it might be a 90-year-old, but I believe somebody's got the rest of my miracle. I believe somebody, they're going to be a service drop down in here, they're going to be anointed walk down in here, and if God don't do it this way, I'm just going to keep walking until I walk out of it. Hallelujah, 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 but I want the benefits of God, I need the benefits of God. He was wounded for our transgression. He is bruised for our iniquity. If your daddy goes down and buys you something, says, well, it's paid for. Go pick it up. Well, daddy, I don't deserve it, but daddy, I'm not fit. You're going to grin and hug his neck. Say, thank you, dad, and take off the get it. Can I tell you, your heavenly father paid for your deliverance. Your heavenly father paid for your salvation. Your heavenly father paid for your miracle, but ain't nobody can pick it up but you. You've got to go pick it up. You've got to go get it yourself. Somebody will just start walking out of it. I'm just going to walk out of it.